Yes, so um, welcome to this session, uh, the training our uh, machine learning model. So it's yet another session on this uh, Novi machine learning series. So for, uh, so the way I have, I have crafted this course is to keep every, um, every type of learner in mind. So there might be advanced learners and there might be some beginners so like uh, who might be completely new to this machine learning. We uh, familiar only with the terms supervised and unsupervised learning. And there might be some intermediate people who might know, know some terms in ML. And then uh, there might be even advanced learners amongst you. So like, you might even know more than I do. I just want to make sure that this course, from, from this course, you have something to take back. There's something new to learn. So that is how I have crafted this course. So yes, this, this is our agenda for today. So we'll have an introduction, have a summary of previous classes because it will be highly discontinuous if we just start with model training and then model evaluation, challenges and limitations. And in the last, I'll go, I'll show you some ex exciting demonstrations also, like especially, um, you know, in order to have a intuitive understanding of how machine learning model work actually train. So yes, uh, significance of model training. So machine learning is the heart of a, a model training is the heart of a machine learning uh, project, any project that you take. So um, I like you can see this picture here. So there's this model training, there's this input, and you feed the model, and then this computer gives some magical predictions. So you can see this guy here. He's really you know uh, confused as to how how this just happened like magic. But then uh, in, in this uh, particular uh, course, you're going to study that, uh, you know, this magic is just plain math that's going to happen. So we just are just going to see what exactly happens behind model training. So in the previous class, you know, model, uh, model pati pinga. So on the like, uh, data process, pani pinga, so, and then you would have chosen a best uh, machine learning model. So here now comes training. So once you cho uh, choose punting a model, so we are just supposed to uh, choose the best parameters and to minimize the loss function. So over the prediction range. So uh, like it, so basically parameters now like uh, like for example like a linear regression Okay. So the parameters now the interceptor that is a parameter and this is a coefficient that is also a parameter. So adkana like an or panro. Okay. So uh, we have to choose the best parameters in order to minimize the loss. Loss function now it's not a big deal. It's just the difference between the actual output. Actually, the like the real world problem would have generated an out, and we are supposed to like uh, and our model generates an, a prediction. So the difference is the loss function. Okay. So one. So like uh, I would like to I I'd like to ask you what do you know about supervised and unsupervised learning. So machine learning uh, once you uh, you know hear of the term machine learning uh, like there will be two terms supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So I'd like you to tell me what what you know about supervised and unsupervised. Come on guys. Like oh, I think supervised learning now uh, label data sets like we tell exactly. them what the answer exactly. Unsupervised now okay. number label la tharamatho the model is supposed to find patterns. Exactly, super, super, yes. So yes, moving uh, like uh, just how uh, you know, Sita said, supervised learning, like you have, uh, you know, you, you have the labels, the target labels, okay, and the data set number which we are training the model, right? So we already have the tar target labels with us. What we have to do is we have to generate a you know a function like a, a mathematical expression which actually which actually you know best fits the model, and then we just you know train it. Other than panu so in supervised learning, we're just creating a mathematical representation. That's like whatever I said is just written here. And in unsupervised, uh, like we don't we have we don't have the target labels at all. We just have the data features. So use data features, create data features, which we are creating a mathematical representation. Okay. So now, uh, like there's also another thing called reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning, I, I'm not covering it here because it's uh, way beyond the topic. But what it does is, like for example, game playing, la, la, where the reinforcement learning is used, uh, is, is much in use. So game playing, la, it will use, like uh, it will be exposed to the environment. Okay, first, it will be exposed to the environment. And then it will learn based on the, like there will be something called policy. Policy is the set of actions that is programmed into the machine. Okay, so based on the policy, it will choose an action. It will perform that action, and after it's uh, it, it performs an action, it uh, gets a uh, feedback from the environment. Okay, in the action, kaha, what are the con consequences based? So, it will be uh, like it will be given a reward. So, if it is favorable, it will give, be given a reward. So, it will learn oh, in the action performed under this condition is rewarded. So, I should uh, you know in 
under such circumstances in the future i should perform particular action so that is how super, uh, reinforcement learning works but i'm not covering the mathematics part of the re uh, reinforcement learning okay uh, like uh, under so previous lessons very short summary so we just collect the data we pre process it data cleaning data cleaning la namakku or data set kadachiruchu we are just you know imputing the mi missing values so we, we are uh, missing values there are, are if there are any missing values we you know check with the other uh, data which is not missing so we you know replace it with the central tendency like mean median mode or anything like that and then outliers adu pannu outliers na like if there is any discrepancy like uh, wrongly denoted data which na we just remove it we just remove it and then uh, like this is how data cleaning is done and then data transformation so we have chosen an ml algorithm that's what you, you must have learned in the previous class so we are going to you know uh, like transform the data which is suitable to train the ml algorithm so adik we have used we are using scaling scaling na or like or periya wide especially numeric data na like it is used now like very wide variety la irukum like it will uh, it will be over a very large range we are supposed to scale it to a convenient convenient scale for example 0 to 1 abina scale pandrathu normalizing normalizing is also the same thing scaling but there are so many you know uh, like uh, variations in normalizing so i'll just tell you the uh, tell it orally but i really encourage you to uh, learn more about it. so when it comes to normalizing there are like a min max normalization there's the z normalization and uh, there are so many uh, other uh, you know types of normalization அதுக்கப்புறம் கேட்டகாரிக்கல் வேரியபிள்ஸ் நம்ம நிறைய கேட்டகரிஸ் இது பண்ணுவோமா ஸோ வந்து கேட்டகாரிக்கல் வேரியபிள்ஸில் லைக் என்கோட் பண்ணுவோம் ஸோ உங்களால் ஒரு ஒரு லைக் பிட்ஸ் பைனரி பிட்ஸ் படிச்சிருக்கீங்களா ஜீரோ அண்ட் ஒன் ஸோ வந்து ஜீரோ அண்ட் ஒன் வந்து கேட்டகாரிக்கல் வேரியபிள்ஸ் ஸோ அது கேட்டகரியில் இருந்தால் ஒன் இல்லைனா ஜீரோ ஸோ தட் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் கால்ட் ஒன் ஹாட் என்கோடே ஓகே ஸோ வில் மூவ் ஆன் so model selection model selection la like when the, the size complexity and based on the nature classification or regression on which you will select the appropriate model so there is uh, there are some models that are available for uh, regression there are some av models available for classification also so then moving on this is when we go to model training so like uh, going back to the you know uh, what is the puzzle that happens when you know you just get, get the prediction what just happens in the black box so even when you you know implement it in scikit learn la but just you know uh, fit the model and and then you just get the output but you are like you have wondered what exactly happens behind that model training when you put a scale learn dot fit adala podum bodhu like what actually beha happens behind what is the mathematics that happens behind what is the logic that happens behind so this is what we are going to cover in model training okay so so far any doubts this is just a uh, introduction so it is one a brief introduction i did this so far any doubts like any questions so far no doubts pop okay the model training how to start yeah About basics it. yes yes and uh, anyone else like anyone else wants to uh, like add in order add on anything or should we uh, like uh, how the really the neural network works uh, like uh, you know, rnn yes. recurrent neural networks and uh, how they work and uh, what are the functionalities they possess and uh, how they transfer the data between and their neurons and uh, what are the uh, drawbacks that they, that neuron has and uh, how the model cool. how the efficient model uh, possess and uh, that kind of things i expect from this course okay cool 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 so yes i can assure you that uh, you have at least a basic idea and not even a basic idea even more than what you expect okay from this course but i go i want to make sure advise you is even if like even if you do not have any anything it's okay i i should clear all the doubts that you have in, in case you want to reach out to me you can also reach out to me at a later time okay so yes so, uh, like uh, kick start so not a loss function so as i already explained in the previous slide loss function is the difference between the actual output and the predicted output that our model creates okay so a machine learning model has to perform this thing it has to make make the loss function it has to minimize the loss function as much as possible okay so like there are so many loss functions that we are going to discuss now so one is the mean squared error mean squared error is the most popular loss function and it's really used in uh, the most uh, again the most popular machine learning model named the linear regression so it is uh, it is like it's the average squared difference you have uh, i'm sure uh, like it's uh, it could have at least have a you know You would have at least uh, came across come across this uh, particular formula before. 
I mean, if not, it's not a problem. It's very simple. So it's it's the average square difference between the predicted and the actual value. So it is basically a squared mean of the difference between actual and predicted. So difference y y y i minus y i cap uh, the square point. We just we are just taking the mean of it. So the next one comes binary cross entropy. So binary cross entropy is used in binary classification problems. So this is used in classification problems. Class, what is binary classification is that when whenever the target variable it is it is either of two classes either class one or class two that is basically called the binary classification problem so this is the uh, uh, like loss function used in uh, this particular softmax uh, loss function so what it is basically just an extension of this binary cross entropy. So, like binary cross entropy, we have two classes, correct? Uh? So here we have, we are, we can extend it to multiple classes. So it is like it is used in multi-class classification problems. Going on. So now we have optimizers. Optimizers, like uh, then upon uh, parameters, like I have already uh, told you about the parameters. Like, uh, we, like I, I, the, def the definition of model training, I have said. We have to adjust the parameters as to minimize the cost for loss, sorry, lost function. So the optimizers are the algorithm which do the exact same thing. So one then these are the type of uh, like uh, uh, optimizers. So I think for, uh, like covering the most uh, like prominent and easier ones. And another thing one then a future uh, like future studies report. I really encourage you to look into that and you know. Uh, like and I and I will also encourage you to you know implement all of these in your projects. That's where you know you actually get to familiarize with all these things. So optimizers, so uh, like this is one of the things called uh, like sto stochastic gradient descent. So guys, uh, like have you studied data structures? Data structures, particularly. See, the board Okay, in whatever programming language, data structures So, uh, like, have you, uh, like, have you come across this n queens problem, n queens problem in data structures? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, n queens pro problem, like, what you do? You just backtrack. You know, you just find the best optimal solution in the like you'll be finding like, and, and like, what I, what exactly you do in an n queens problem is there'll be a chessboard. We have to place the queen such a way that no other queen attacks each other. Like we have to like find all the possible learners. Uh, so the other all the possible return. Eh? So uh, like what what do we do is we, we use the you know uh, like concept of backtracking, right? So like uh, like uh, like we have to you know we are just optimizing optimizing to the best possible uh, like position. Okay. Uh, so like uh, like this is uh, something which is also used. Something similar is also used. I just uh, you know. Uh, Told this example to uh, told you this example to draw an analogy. So what exa exactly happens is like uh, whenever we have like it is, this is called convex optimization. So whether like Elena uh, gradient descent in the algorithm So gradient descent So we are supposed to reach the global minimum uh, like uh, we have to uh, like uh, the loss function and the derivation We have to reach the global minimum. So we have to make it as less as possible. Okay. So stochastic gradient descent one, it is a specialized, uh, you know, it is a special form of gradient descent. So the loss function, and we have to come here, we have to come here, we have to model one better. So what we do is, gradient descent, we take the entire data set, and then we will uh, perform it, uh, like we will perform the operation. But stochastic gradient descent, like we will take it in batches. So that's why you would have said, you like you would have you would have mentioned that it is work it works well for uh, large data sets as well because it takes it in batches and it's also computationally efficient. Okay, so got this uh, like got this concept in mind. So yes, yes, Adam optimizer. This is another op optimizer. So like uh, it will combine the first uh, first and the second moments of the gradient and it will up update the mo model parameters. So, other, other, like, uh, similar to like stochastic gradient descent, it also well uh, works well for large data sets. So, yes, uh, like I'm, I'm not going too much into the mathematical formula, but I just want you to expose the various concepts in, uh, in, in this uh, like particular domain of model training. So, yes, now comes regularization. Okay. So, we will have to get ourselves accustomed to this uh, particular term named overfitting and underfitting. Okay. 
So, overfitting and underfitting. You know, you've heard about it. What is overfitting? What is underfitting? Just give me a like, yes or no answer. If yes, like, vaguely, just give me, like, uh, just give me an answer. Yes, Tom. Overfitting, underfitting. Okay. Like, the, the pati, like, what is your idea on this? Overfitting, underfitting, and then I'll sign you. So, overfitting now, it's when uh, moral uh, pain too much on a data set. So, if we, you know, give it any more new data, we won't be able to correct the data. Underfit is in the moral, you know, undertrain is in the data. Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect answer. Who is that, Peno? Heaters. Heaters, very good heaters. So, that's the thing. Exactly what heaters said. So, overfitting, underfitting, that's the thing. It's a very important concept. Wait. Yes. So, screen theory is the number one. So, there is this, uh, like, diag three diagrams that are given. So, underfit, as, as heaters said, there are, uh, this is the, like, uh, Data, these are the data points and this is the model so here you can see it is completely not tuned to uh, like it is it is not tuned to the model at all it is, it is like it's completely random okay it doesn't learn like in, if we have to say it in technical uh, no, terminologies it doesn't learn the, uh, the model properly so like it will have the bias like bias what exactly we mean by bias is the difference between the actual output and the predicted output so this model gives a predictor like uh, gives an output for a particular input, right? So the bias like would be re really high. There's no call, like it, it is completely irrelevant to the uh, model itself. Okay, yeah. so it has very high bias and it has low variance. Okay, so this is this is an important concept used in underfitting. So when the low, low variance here now, like uh, the one like uh, the mean value overall mean value, kind of one the like it is fine to work. So, okay so and, the, uh, and this is uh, the proper model so this is the this is actually the uh, perfect model that we are trying to accomplish one second one, one second yeah sorry sorry for the uh, like I had to tend to something else. Okay, so either one, it's a it's a balanced model. This is what we this is the model that we are aiming to create. Okay, here it is uh, overfitted. So overfitting now the model has learned too much, way too much than what is required. It has even uh, like it has even been sensitive to the noise. The like noise is the actually like disturbance in the data. So like the noise could have sensitive on the it has like. If if you one if you you know tell the difference between the actual and predicted, there's no like difference at all. It's just it just gives the perfect output. And now what happens in this case is that when you go to the test and we actually test the model, it will actually flop. This model is actually a flop because it is more accustomed to the training uh, training data and it is also like uh, accustomed to the noise, the bias, and everything. And so it is not like it won't perform well in a real, real world situation where we are where it is exposed to new data. This is what happens. So, when the like, bias come here, go. okay, and a high variance, go. variance error basically. So, like, uh, the, the no, variance is what, what exactly do you mean by variance? Is the spread of the data. So, there's no spread at all. It's completely, uh, you know, the, the model is accustomed to each and every data point in this uh, particular uh, uh, like data set. So, there's like very high variance. Here, no low variance because it is like quite spread out, okay. So we need, we are uh, like, uh, what we are trying to achieve is it, it has to balance between bias as well as variance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? One second, it would need to slow off. Okay. okay, any doubts? No doubts. Sir. No doubts. So, like, we have a new joinee here also. Okay. Yeah, fine. 
So yes, moving on. So regularization. So coming back, regularization in a tech is a technique that is used to prevent overfitting in machine learning models. So number, we have all just seen about uh, like overfitting. So like there are two methods that I have introduced you to. So this is one is called L1 regularization and another one is called L2 regularization. Okay. So L1 regularization and now the loss function it will add a penalty term. Okay. Pen penalty term on the add panito. So on the alpha pro on the L2 regularization on the uh, like squared value of parameters based pani in the pan parameter on the add pan. Okay, in the Patina on the demo on the like I, I'll, I'll show you at the fag end of the session. I don't want to bore you with all these you know like technicalities, like already have been boring you, so I don't want to bore you further. Okay, so there's this uh, another thing called a uh, dropout, so it is basically for neural networks. So, and then, uh, like, uh, like, so anybody has any idea of, about neural network? I'll just have like, I'll, I'll just give you a basic idea if, you, if you're not aware. Okay, so basically, like, uh, uh, neural networks are not so I think in, uh, yeah. yeah, so basically like uh, in case anyone doesn't know, so basically neural networks is basically a mimic, it is actually a mimicry of the human brain, okay, of the uh, working of the human brain. So it has neurons, so like uh, the, it forms neural, like our brain has so many neurons and whenever we, knew, we learn something new, we actually see something new, our brain actually, the neurons in our brains actually form neuro connections. Okay, so uh, something similar happens in neural networks. So it has neurons and it actually uh, like it fires. Like, uh, like you, you have heard this term, neurons fire and wire. Okay, so while learning anything, something new, like your neurons actually fire together. Like, uh, and uh, the more familiar we are with some particular habit or something, that's how we actually form habits in the first place. So like uh, when our brain forms neural connections, we actually, you know, uh, we, uh, when we perform stronger and stronger connections, the behavioral habit actually gets more, much more stronger. So something exactly same happens in uh, neural networks. So like during model training, it, what it actually happens is it's actually for, like uh, like learning from the data set and it actually uh, like, uh, like makes, uh, you know, it learns from the data and it actually, it is also used in uh, classification mainly. So in the delay, now in a control, like uh, like while it's learning features from the data, it randomly drop out. What it does is it ra randomly uh, drops out, or it actually deactivates some of the neurons. Okay. So on the, the remaining neurons, what it actually does is okay. Some some of the neurons are deactivated. So it has to learn features. Okay. It has to learn features on its own. So this actually what it does is it uh, actually uh, prevents overfitting. So on the overfitting line, and all, like it actually uh, some of the features. So it's, it actually sees which of, which of the features are actually important, which are supposed to be neglected, and all of that. All of that inf uh, like information can be easily uh, learned in the drop outlet. So another technique is early stopping. So like uh, one important thing which I want to say is when we have a particular data set, we actually split the data set into three parts. Okay. So we can use, uh, mostly we sl split it into two, uh, two parts, okay, one is 80% for training and 20% uh, for testing. So testing, can, uh, we, uh, like the motive behind it is, uh, we do not want the, like, once we have uh, trained the model with the training data, we just want to expose it to new data. So that's why we use testing data. So on the here, what we do is, we do, uh, we have a, like, it will be covered more on the first, further chapters, but I'm just giving you a very basic idea. So on the validation set, you know, we set it for. So what we do is, uh, like after immediately after training, what we do is there is this validation set. Validation set. Uh, what we do is there's some there's a method called k-fold validation. So for example, let's say k is particular any number. Okay, let's take uh, five to be uh, the value of k. So what it does is validation data set. Uh, it will actually uh, split it into five parts. So once it splits into five parts, it actually uh, like. It is exposed to one of the five parts and then it is trained on one of the five parts and then it actually tests on the other five parts. Okay. So, and it, uh, again, it randomly selects another one of the five parts, trains on uh, like uh, uh, trains on one of the part and it uh, actually tests on the other five parts and the other remaining four parts. That's how it works. So, like uh, va validation center. Okay. So, what, what we do is early stopping, 
when a validation set performance stop it stops improving it has kind of reached a like uh, we have, I, I have already shown you this curve right so uh, kind of uh, like uh, does it has it uh, like improve further we immediately stop training the model so when we overtrain we, we we have higher risk of overfitting so we just want to stop it when the uh, performance stops improving okay so yes i'll, I'll be covering all the rest of it very uh, fast okay so batch normalization it's basically used in neural networks okay and the, like uh, it, will, it is basically used to prevent the vanishing gradient problem so what is this vanishing gradient problem now like there is this uh, like when we actually back propagate okay so like uh, we actually uh, you know pass the data into a neural network we actually find a now uh, find an output and then when the output is not actually expected as uh, like when the uh, when the output is doesn't match with the required expected output what it does is it back propagates it actually reassigns the weights the, and the biases and then it again strains so what happens is like there's a lot of differentiation involved so in ahuna there's this problem that we face that is called the vanishing gradient problem so what happens in this vanishing gradient problem is that it like uh, like as it uh, as it is exposed to so many you know differentiations it becomes so exceedingly small it, it almost gets nullified okay it almost uh, like tends to zero so there is no pro proper uh, weights that, that can be assigned during back propagation so that is why like a batch normalization is used so yes i would uh, I actually have i will i'll go faster more like uh, after, after this i i'd uh, i'll be sharing this ppt and i would like to ex i'd like you to explore more on this and i'll also provide you with links so yes data augmentation so data augmentation i think i actually kind of uh, we actually had a discussion on it, on this in the previous session actually i i was i think i was explaining it so that's exactly what, what we uh, do here so data augmentation is like when is this especially happens then when you know, we are like low on data set so okay so and we want a variety in our own data sets so exactly so suppose if you go to this uh, robo flow uh, library i can also show you if you want so data augmentation lab like once we upload any data set there is this uh, like uh, we can actually perform uh, like uh, obtain variations of the original data set and we can actually it will uh, give the model a lot of variation for us for it to get trained from so like so some of the common techniques are flipping rotating cropping like adjusting the color and uh, like just the edge mapping everything so this is this what comes under data augmentation and another one is transfer learning so tra transfer learning so suppose you are going to perform an image uh, like uh, like Im image like computer vision project okay so you are using this yolo model so like there is this so, so many models that you like many of you would have heard there is this thing called yolo there is this thing called uh, like uh, mobile nets and all of that so like they, these are all pre trained okay so what we actually do is we have to like uh, for example let's take the uh, example of yolo so yolo like uh, you must be aware of uh, like that it's trained on the coco data set and it has so many class class values like it's around 90 okay like of consisting of ordinary objects like uh, bicycles persons cell phones and all of that so what uh, like these are uh, like this is the pre trained model and you want to classify between like uh, for example you have to classify the various uh, types of uh, suppose you are an engineer and you want to classify the various, various types of mechanical parts that are available so if you want a model to uh, like it fine tune to your specific tasks so that is what is called uh, like transfer learning another thing is called pre feature extraction so yes this is like i'll, uh, I'll actually stop me here and actually go for a demo i'll choose an image project and i'll actually choose a actually choose a class let's say i want to classify a mobile phone okay So I'm going to switch on my webcam, and I'm going to expose it to as many uh, number of mobile phones as possible. Okay. Yeah. So yes, hold. Okay, I've taken like thirty images almost. Okay. So these are thirty images of mobile phones, and I've tried to you know perform as many variations as possible. 
so like uh, let me also i have another object with me like let me say this 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 bottle water bottle that i have so like uh, in order to ensure that you know if everything is balanced i am trying to uh, like take the number of uh, samples as like same in number as the previous class so i switch on the webcam expose it to the spot okay so yes it actually let me train it's training so another thing which you can uh, notice here is that it has this epox epox 0 on 50 so like e epox is another okay let me just check this check whether it's the model okay it classifies me as a mobile phone very nice but uh, yeah classifies mobile phone classifies this body okay so this is how it actually learns the features i just you know like how it trains is basically like just black box rules it's just magic okay but what exactly happens is it has learned the features so for example it has uh, how how does it know that the uh, when i expose it to the the camera how the uh, like a uh, sorry not the camera the phone how does it know like this is actually a mobile phone because it, has, it would have learned the feature of the color because it's black the feature of this shape is actually a rectangle okay so uh, like and then like how does this classify it as a bottle so it like it would have probably you know associated with the white color maybe it would have associated with the shape of this is much more elongated much much more rounder okay so this is how it uh, like uh, you know it has uh, features so, so so let me actually expose it to another new object let me see how it yeah okay nice it actually classifies it as a bottle even though like it has like even though it is pink in color it is actually uh, identified it as a water bottle nice so let me actually uh, create another class let me create another class and i let me say pink bottle okay okay so i'm exposing it Okay, fine. Let me again train. Now it has three classes. So yes, and we must have uh, like observed something that there is uh, something called epochs, like zero on fifty. Like uh, in one epoch, it actually in, uh, like over the the you know over the course of fifty epochs, what it actually does is it actually uh, like learns more and more and more and more uh, like features from the data. That, that's what epoch is all about. So when if we have hundred epochs, we have more learned better features. But it's actually not needed because our our model works well enough as of now. So yes, like it has learned. Oh wow! Nice. It's actually interesting. So something interesting has happened. Okay. So it actually classified it uh, classifies it as a pink bottle rather than just a bottle. So now the class that comes in the bottle is actually the white bottle. Got it? so like i i what i like the the more motive behind is to actually make you exposed to this instead of just telling in terms of mathematics and all of that okay so another thing uh, like uh, who was uh, like i think it was mugil vanan who actually wanted me to know like wanted me to you know understand uh, like let him understand how actually a neural network works so like i have uh, i have told about Like some of these uh, factors will be explained in the further classes. Okay, so some of these which I'll be explaining it to you now. So some like things about uh, activation, uh, redo, uh, like th this will be covered in the future classes. I guess it will be in uh, evaluation. So yes, uh, like this this classification time and this is the data set. It's not a linear data set, right? So as you can see. So like uh, I guess it's not something which can be you know performed by a linear regression or something. It's not a linearly separable data set. It's circular. Okay. So actually, what I do is I have uh, this number of um, input layers and each number of neurons. And actually, uh, I would like to say something: the choice of having uh, you know uh, the, the the number of neurons in each input layer it's completely up to you. Okay. So what I do is so uh, the motive uh, behind this is to actually train this. Actually, uh, actually classify both of these. 
and uh, I like and this uh, this is the learning rate. So we have set it to point three. Like, let me set it to point one and let me run it. Okay, so I like, get runs over a set of epochs. Okay, let's run. Okay, this class. So let me actually do this. This. Okay, wait. Let me reset it. Okay, it has takes so much longer time to actually like it's it almost is also almost null now. So the learning rate is basically null here. Let me actually do it now. Okay, it does take time, but it definitely does does a good job. It takes like more less of the learning rate, more number of epochs as it takes to train it. Okay. <clears throat> So when when I set it to point three, it actually learnt it almost in an instant, and the, the number of epochs, even even if you keep increasing it, it just makes it more uh, like it actually like it is actually kind of overfitted like what we have discussed. It is make it like it has learnt a lot of it's learning more and more features as the number of epochs increase. So what I, what I exactly happens here is. So, uh, as like uh, every time we can see this particular black weight, and it goes down, down and down and down. So, what it actually learns is it actually learns the parameters. So, uh, like uh, the lesser the learning rate, the the steps it takes will be really really less. So, it takes very very small steps to reach here, and that is why when we you know set the learning rate to 0 0.0001 or something, it took. A very long time, almost negligible time. It it would have just moved a point inch or something, like just a point from one place to another. It would have barely moved. Okay, so here and uh, like when we set the learning rate to point three, it has actually would have made some bigger jumps to reach here. And after this, it uh, like it has uh, it is learning more and more features. So we have to set the learning rate and epochs. We have to be really careful, like uh, while setting learning rate and epochs, because like. Uh, we have to choose the values of the learning rate and epochs in such a way that the model trains, but it does not overfit. So yes, so now we have come to the to, to the end of uh, like model training process. So here, uh, like uh, model evaluation and all of that will be covered much in depth in the upcoming uh, uh, seminars. But I'll just give you an over uh, like overview of it. So uh, accuracy. Accuracy is the correct pre 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 uh, predictions out of the total number of predictions. It's mostly used in classification problems. So, and another one is the uh, like uh, F1 score, which is basically the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So, precision it actually measures the proportion of two positives out of the no total number of positive predictions. So, it is actually uh, all this is basically uh, based on the confusion matrix that we create. Okay, confusion matrix is basically uh, like uh, it's a it's a diagram that we use to find the number of actually. Uh, to actually analyze the working uh, of our uh, trained model. Another one is ROC curve. So it is a plot of true value rate against false uh, positive rate. So yes, like what are the biggest challenges that we face? So you might have very sophisticated ML model, uh, like well, you might have very sophisticated high-end tools. But if we are if we, like, if you don't have any, you know, the required data for this, it will there's no use of actually performing the model. So data availability and quality of data is some of the biggest challenges that we face. And then like interpreting the like uh, the the output of a machine learning model, there is also a huge limitation as well. And another another one is the complexity. So yes, uh, like th these are the basics that I've covered, and uh, there are under further uh, you know areas where uh, where you can actually you gain a lot from so there's this uh, automated machine learning tools so we must have heard uh, things like five carrot so what it does is actually it actually uh, uh, like for any given uh, data set it actually makes the machine learning tools to uh, select and training actually even the training of the machine uh, machine learning model is kind of automated so that is uh, that is basically what auto ml is about so like you can uh, check out five carrot and there's also an auto ml from uh, provided by data bricks as well so and there's this uh, another uh, concept called explainable AI. So it makes uh, machine learning models more transparent and interpretable. So yes, data parallelism and model parallelism. Parallelism and uh, this actually goes beyond the scope of uh, of the model training. So what I uh, like giving you a basic uh, info about what distributed training is. 
like suppose if you want to you know if we have to put on our machine learning for uh, suppose our machine learning model is highly uh, computational power intensive if you want to distribute it among various uh, like different cores and we have to distribute it among various different uh, computers so these are the methods that are used to actually distribute the model training processes itself so and uh, in this uh, particular lecture i actually uh, taught about adam optimizer so like there are more optimizers that you can learn about there is this rms prop nestrop and adagrel so yes with this we come to the conclusion of the 